Hey guys, I just wanted to make a care video on leopard geckos because I've watched a bunch of videos in the past and some of the information on them is incorrect. So I just want to clear a few things up. And first thing I want to talk about is um, the size of the gecko. When you first get it, it it'll probably be a juvenile. Um, so if you get it from a, a breeder, it'll be around five to six inches. If you get it from a pet store, it'll probably be around four to five three to four inches long. Uh, the adult females uh, should be about seven to eight inches and the adult males will be around eight to ten. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is tank size. Because leopard geckos are relatively small reptiles, you can get away with a ten gallon, but I suggest a twenty or bigger. With uh, You want to get a screen top and you want to make sure that it's um, metal and it's not plastic or mesh. Um, but the reason I suggest a 20 over a 10 is because um, once you put all the hides and things in there, it's not there's not really a lot of room for them to walk around. So this is a 30 gallon. It's a fish tank. If you get like a 20 gallon long um, reptile tank, it should probably be more room. But this is a 30 gallon fish tank, and as you can see, it looks pretty full. So uh, you want to be uh, you want to make sure that all this stuff in there, um, there's enough room. Um, sometimes uh, they can get stressed out if they don't have enough room to walk around, and um, it it can really mess them up. And if you uh, have too much room, sometimes it'll stress them out too. And it's because sometimes they can't find the heat gradients good. Like in a 50 gallon tank, if you have them in there all by themselves, it's it's pretty hard for them to find a uh, their heat source so um, make sure that it's big enough for one to fit all the things in there uh, the next thing I want to talk about is substrate and this is the biggest mistake that people make when they're decorating their enclosures and many people assume that because leopard geckos are from the deserts that they should be housed on sand but not all of the desert is made up of loose sand and where leopard geckos are naturally found, it's where they're made where they're they come from where it's all like there's sand and then there's rocks over it. So um if you have if you are gonna put sand or if you have sand in there, um you should have like you should put you should buy like slate tiles and cover it. Um you can house the adults on the sand but you don't want to house the babies on there because they're clumsy when they get their food and they tend to get mouthfuls of sand or whatever substrate you have and it can give them impaction which is when um, their digestive system gets clogged up and they can't go to the bathroom right um, it's basically like a long-term constipation for them um, it's it's still common with the older geckos just not as much and you really want to avoid any loose substrates. Um, if you are going to use sand, just make sure that you have something covering it just to avoid impaction. It can happen to any kind, any any gecko. Um, but you want to avoid the play sand, which is um, called, I think it's called Vita sand in pet stores. Um, calcium based sand. It, it, they may claim that it's good for them, but they can still get impacted from it. Um, potting soil, wood shavings, uh, cat litter, walnut shells, crushed corn cob, anything that's a loose substrate you don't really want to use. Um, the things that you can use is um, paper towels, the uh, indoor or outdoor carpet, uh, you can use slate tiles, rollout liner, and you can use reptile carpet, which is what I use. Honestly, I think that uh, slate tiles would work the best because um, like the floor tiles that you'd use in your kitchen or something like that because um, it heats it up really real good and it um, provides good warmth for them so uh, those are the substances that you do and don't want to use and um, the next thing I want to talk about is temperatures for and the heating and lighting so for Heating and lighting. I have this light up here. It's a 175 watt lamp with a 150 watt bulb in it. And um, 
it, you just want to have a higher wattage of the light than the bulb. You want to make sure that the wattage of the lamp is higher because um, it can mess up your lamp. Um, for the, you also want to have on the bottom, I have it on the bottom corner, the bottom left side over here in this area up to the cactus here. It's a under tank heater, a heat pad. Um, it's sometimes referred to as a UTH. Um, and it's just this little square and um, it, it just, you plug it in and it heats it up and there's like sticky side on it so you stick it on and then it comes with these little feet so you can rise up your tank um, so that it doesn't squish the cord and break it. Um, it's just a simple little black thing. If you don't know what they are, you can Google it and you can go to the pet store and you can um, ask them for one and then you, you can get one according to your tank size. It'll have the like the, the 10, 20 gallon thing on there. Um, and you want your temperatures on the hot side to be around 88 to 90 during the day and you want them to be around 75 and 80 on the cool side. Um, at night it should be around 60, 68, 69 around those temperatures on the cool side and 75 to 78 on the hot side at night. Um, if you live in a spot that's colder you can always um, get another lamp for uh, the top and you can turn that on at night. There's different colors like there's blue and red and black and those colors aren't inside. Those colors aren't in the gecko's uh, visible spectrum so they can't see those colors so to them it might look bright to you but to them it's still dark. Um, and for tell for rating the heating you want to have two thermometers and a hydrometer and um, right now I only have one thermometer I'm gonna go to the pet store tomorrow and get another thermometer and a hydrometer but you can you can either have a thermometer uh, here hydrometer in the middle here and another thermometer for the cool side here or you can just have them all in the top part there but you want to have the cool, the cool side thermometer around where um, the um, where the cool height is. In the hydrometer level, the, the moisture should be around 50%, 50, 50, 60 around those is um, just fine. If you want to uh, like spray it down, and there are three different types of um, thermometers you can get. You can get this one that's like a little strip, and it just goes up. I, I think I'm going to get rid of that one because it's cheap and it only goes up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it only goes up to 90. Um, and then the temperatures sometimes get higher and I can't really read what it is. So, um, And then there's that one. There's the garden variety, which is with the little dial. And then there's um, a digital one, which that one costs more, but it's got the exact temperature on there. So, um... The next thing I want to talk about is hides and things of that nature. Um, I have three different hides. I have this log hide right here on the hot side, um, this rock over here on the uh, cool side, and then I have this little plastic thing over here. And that is, um, it's a moist box, and that's a little, um, it's got paper towel right there, and then um, I spray it down and I wet it. Uh, every day and it's just a glad container with a hole cut in the front of it and it helps them um, shed and it makes it possible for them to shed so their shed doesn't get stuck on them and um, so it doesn't constrict their limbs. Um, there's a guy on YouTube his name is Reptile Creation and he did a really great video on uh, on the importance of having a moist box so you can go check that out. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is um, food and, and water. For food you can feed crickets, mealworms, and waxworms. Those are the three main things that I feed. Waxworms, you want to feed them as a treat. Like if, if they crawl up into your hand when you have your hand in there, you want to give them a waxworm and 
just kind of like to train them. Oh, I did something good. Um, because they're basically if you feed those as a meal, it's like having a McDonald's cheeseburger every single day. Um, so you don't want to do that because they can get addicted and get obese and die. Um, but you want to you want to switch it up a little bit. You want to have you want to feed mainly crickets, but sometimes you can get a little thing of mealworms and um, put them just feed them them. Um, the mealworms come in a little container, little circle thing with sawdust in it. It's uh, like Armstrong's mealworms, and they usually come in a 50 count. Um, the crickets, they have a little thing, and they have them in a bag. They put them in a bag for you, and then I have. I, I bought when I bought when I got my lizard I bought this uh, cricket keeper and it just holds all the crickets in there most of them are dead because uh, it was really hot and they all suffocated and died but um, they crawl up into these little tubes here and then um, they you just pull it out and you shake it out uh, inside the tank there and then um, and then yeah, your lizard eats them. Um, for if you're gonna feed mealworms, like if you're gonna leave them in there, and you do have a loose substrate, uh, you would probably want to get a food dish um, because if they get into that substrate, you're never gonna see them again. Um, so if when you have your food dish, when you have your food dish, you want to have uh, calcium inside that, so when they go for the mealworms, um, they get a mouthful of calcium in there too. And calcium is, uh, I get this kind, uh, Fluker's calcium with, that says the vitamin D3 on the bottom there. Um, it's just, uh, this little, uh, white powder, and I gotta go get some more. But, um, it's like, it's vitamins for them. You can get it with, you can get plain calcium, or you can get it with vitamin D3. Um... It's like you just dust it, and it's like for them, it's um, like milk, and it's it's good for them, but they can't drink milk, so it's calcium, yeah. I have a little milk cap in there with the calcium next to the cactus, and he kicks it around a lot, and you can see his little footprints because he stepped in it, but I've never actually seen him eat out of it, like the calcium out, it, uh, out of it until... A few days ago, I'd, I thought it was useless having it in there, but he, they actually do eat out of it. You might not see it, but they do, so um, you want to have that in there. You want to dust the crickets. Um, you want to you wanna dust the crickets. You want to put the calcium inside the bag and shake it up, um, or you can just do it like me and tape two cups together and then put the calcium in there and the crickets. Um, you want to make sure that you feed the, the babies twice every day and the adults um, two two to three times a week and you want to dust them twice a, you want to dust the crickets twice a week um, and you have to feed them the crickets uh, and the mealworms and whatever else you feed them a nutritious healthy thing so I feed Fluker's orange cube complete cricket diet this little orange junk it smells horrible but it's got the food and the water stuff in there you just want to feed something that's nutritious so that um, they'll the lizards will get healthy. It's called that process is called gut loading. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is um, water. Now this is the most one of the most important things um, about having a lizard. You want to have a shallow water dish so they don't fall in and drown, and you want to um, clean the water out of it every single day. And this rock here, if you don't clean it, it gets slimy on the inside, and it's disgusting. And that means that there's bacteria in there. So if you have a dish and you feel it and it feels slimy, that means you need to get some soap and squirt it in there and take a sponge and you need to scrub it out real good. Because that means there's bacteria in there and it can um, seriously hurt your gecko. Um, that's all I want to talk about. If you guys have any questions, post in the comments below or send me a message. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.